The Link Show is just about to start. If you want to be a part of The Link Show, head over to linkkids.com.au forward slash live. Welcome to a very special live filming of The Link Show with a live studio audience! <laughs> Today we're starting a brand new series called Suit Up. And CC and I are getting super serious in our super serious quiz. I'm going to be going on a Minecraft adventure to build the greatest diamond armor of all time. All that and so much more. Are you ready? Oh, what's up? How are we going? Are we good? episode of The Link Show. We're starting a new series called Suit Up. Suit Up. And you know what, Cece, talking about suits, I've actually found a really, really cool suit Show that you. I think we might all like. It's on the screen. There it is. It's a deep diving suit. Who's ever seen a deep diving suit before? I think it's really, really cool because it actually allows the divers to go in like high temperature mm. places, like cold temperatures and, and high deep. pressure situations and super, super deep. Now, Miguel, I don't know about you. You would never catch me dead in one of those suits. Um, me neither. Who would actually go like deep into the ocean? Put your hands up. Yeah. You On the are screen very as well. Brave. Very, well very brave. But I feel like right now, let's go see what Buckle's up to because I think he's trying to find a piece of armor. Ooh, Something. Let's have a look. Oh, the armor of God. Yes. yes. All right, let's have a look. <laughs> let's have a look. Hello everybody and welcome to week two of our series called Suit Up where we're taking a look at the armor of God and I am currently on an adventure in Minecraft which we'll get to in a moment looking for diamond armor to build myself a suit of armor in the game. Now last week we talked about the belt of truth today we're talking about the breastplate of righteousness we're going to talk about what that means how it applies to our lives what is righteousness and why does the Bible say it's like a breastplate we're going to get to that in a second but right now we need to get back into our game because our last episode we got everything we need to get started we got food we got wood we got our crafting table and we found a village that we're going to use as our home base this week what we want to try to do is find some iron so that we can uh because you need an iron pickaxe to be able to mine diamonds so let's start by grabbing ourselves some food i'm going to take this with us because we are going to start delving down underground i think that's going to be the best way and uh, as you know you can turn hay into bread so i'm going to get started on this and uh I'll be back with you in just a moment. Okay, so I've collected enough resources to begin the adventure underground. We've got heaps of wood, heaps of stacks of planks. We've got some sticks. We've got stone gear, and uh, we have a heap of other just random odds and ends. Hopefully, we don't need to come back to the surface. Let's drop down here, and hopefully, we don't fall too far. Oh, and look what I found at the bottom already. We have some iron. That's perfect. And we'll chuck it in a smelter. I'm going to have to get a lot more, but we've at least got iron. We've got the ball rolling. So I'm going to get myself some iron gear. We'll go find some more iron ready for next episode so that we can start digging deeper into the world and we can get ourselves diamonds by the end of this series. It's going to be fun. But here's the thing about righteousness. What is righteousness? Well, it, in simple terms, it's living the right way. It's living a way that God would want us to to live and the reason that it's like a breastplate is a breastplate when it comes to armor it protects your heart which is one of the most valuable parts of your body your heart is what helps everything else do what it needs to do it's the core of who you are and if you're the sort of person that at the core of who you are you try to always do the right thing if that's the sort of person you are then even if you do accidentally mess up or you do make mistakes at the heart of who you are you're trying to do the right thing and, and so you can face those mistakes that you make in humility saying i'm so sorry i didn't mean to do that and so a little later on we're going to take a look at a story in the bible of someone who was surrounded by other people doing the wrong thing the bible says that they were living the exact opposite way to the way that God wanted and yet this person had to make a choice am I going to follow what everybody else is doing or at the core of who I am in my heart will I live righteous and so that's why the breastplate of righteousness covers our heart because it covers the core of who you are and the thing about a breastplate of righteousness having this spiritual armor it protects 
your heart. And so when you see other people doing the wrong thing, when there are people around you trying to tell you to be naughty or do things that you know aren't right, the breastplate can protect your heart so that you don't fall for those traps. You don't fall into doing what other people are doing just because it's cool or because it's fun because the breastplate protects the core of who you are. And so a little later on, we're going to take a look at that story in the Bible and we're going to see how we can also follow God's plan for our lives, even if you are sometimes surrounded by people that aren't following God's plan for their lives. We'll talk about that in just a moment, but I'm going to throw back to the studio with Cece and Miguel. I hope Buckle does okay this time. Forget about Buckle, I think we need some help. And it's time for the Super Serious Quiz. Oh, are you guys ready to play with us? All right. All right, how's everyone doing? Now this is called the Super Serious Quiz. So what's gonna happen is they're gonna write their answers to the questions on the whiteboard. If you think that Cece is the closest, you're gonna do a giant C. If you think Miguel is gonna be the closest, give me a big M on your head like that. Are you ready to play the Super Serious Quiz? Yeah! Okay, here we go with question number one. The first question. How many times does a bee's wing beat every second? So every second, how many times do you think a bee flutters its wings? What do you guys think? If you think you know the answer, yell it out. What do you reckon? Is it 10? Is it 100? What do you reckon it is? All right, Cece says 80. Miguel says 20. Who thinks Cece is correct? Give me a big C. If you think Miguel's correct, give me an M. Oh, look at all look those Cs. So much faith in me. So the answer is 190 <laughs> times. Cece is correct. Thank you, thank you. 190 times a every second. second. Did you love my little 190 movie? times a second. That's what? crazy. Uh, okay, so Cece's crazy. on one point. Let's go on yes. to question number two. In years, how old is Nintendo? <laughs> in years, how old is Nintendo? Let's see what some kids reckon. How many years do you reckon it is? You reckon 90 something? 90 something? What do you reckon? You reckon about 90? 50? You reckon 50? All right, Cece and Miguel, let's take a look at your answer. Cece says 50. Miguel says 60. The answer is 133. Miguel! All right, it's one each, one each. Let's go to question number three. Question number three. What is the longest documented case of the hiccups in one big stint? So what is the longest documented case? What's the longest someone's had the hiccups, basically? All right, you reckon it's 73? What do you reckon? A week, a whole week. What do you reckon? Give me your hand, give me your numbers with your hands. Zero, 60, 68, 68. All right, Cece, what have you got? I said 63, 63 days. days. Very specific. Not 63 years, 63 yes, days. days. Miguel, what have you got? 73 days. 73 days. days. Oh. Whoa, who reckons Cece or Miguel? Quick, seat for Cece and for Miguel. All right, let's have a look. The answer is 68 years. I'm closer. 68 years. Miguel's on two. Miguel's on two. This is crazy. All right, Cece's on one, Miguel's on two. Question four, how long can a sloth hold its breath for? How long can a sloth, how long can a sloth hold its breath for? What do you reckon? Let's go, let's see. All right, give me like one, five, what do you reckon? Two hours, minutes, two hours? For two hours, what do you reckon? All right, here we go. Cece, what have you put? I said three hours. Three hours to Cece. Miguel, what have you got? Seven, seven days. days. Oh, wow. Okay, That's seven so days. Okay, who thinks Cece? <laughs> or who thinks Miguel? Give us a C or an M. You know how it works. Here we go. Let's see. The answer is 40 what? minutes. Certainly, I'm the winner. Cece wins. You've got all of them right so far in the audience. You've got all four correct so far. What about at home? Have you got all four correct? We've got one left. It's a tiebreaker. Cece and Miguel are on two each. Let's go to the final question, which is in feet. What is the length of the world's longest noodle? Longest what? Longest noodle. Like noodles. The longest noodle. Like stir fry noodles. Yeah. What's the longest noodle in feet? All right, let's have a look. You reckon seven feet or six feet? Six feet? Someone here's like way more. All right, have you got your answers? All right, let's have a look. Cece and Miguel. Seven feet, 
six feet. Okay. Oh, it's close. Who thinks it's like longer than all of those? Yeah, I think it's way bigger than those. Okay, if you think Cece's correct, give us a C. If you think the girls are closest, give us an M. The answer is... Oh, hold on, I'm gonna go over here. 10,119 feet! Oh, me! Cece Because it's whoever's the closest. That was fun, but now let's go check out our animated Barbie story. Say hello to Noah, one of the champions of the Bible, and you can read his story in the book of Genesis. Now the Bible tells us that Noah was a righteous man, that he lived his life doing things that made God happy, but sadly he was the only person living this way. Everyone else were doing evil things and hurting each other, and this made God sad. And so God decided to send a flood to destroy every living thing on the planet. But because Noah was a righteous man, God decided to save Noah and his whole family. So God came to Noah and said, Noah, build a big boat, fill it with two of every animal and bird because I'm going to send a flood to cover the whole earth. And so Noah did as God commanded. He built the boat and put two of every animal and every bird as well as enough food for them all. Then Noah and his family hopped on board and then God shut the door. It rained and it poured for 40 days and 40 nights. The flood got so big that it covered the tallest mountain. There was not a dry spot left on earth. But Noah, his family and all the animals were safe. God remembered them. And so God sent a strong wind and the floodwaters started to go down. Noah and his family were floating in the boat for five months until finally the boat came to rest on the top of a mountain. Noah released a raven, but it flew around because there was still water covering the land. A little bit later, Noah released a dove and it flew around, but because there was still water on the ground, there was nowhere for it to land and so it flew back to Noah. Noah waited seven days and let the dove go again. And this time, the dove came back holding an olive leaf in its mouth. Noah waited one more week and let the dove go again. And this time, the dove didn't come back. Noah could see outside that the ground was beginning to dry. Noah waited a little longer until God said, Noah, it is time to leave the ark. Once they'd all left the boat, Noah made an altar to God and worshipped him. God said to Noah, Noah, I will never flood the earth again. And so God put a rainbow in the sky, marking his promise to Noah. Because of Noah's righteousness, Noah was saved from the flood. The thing about this story that I absolutely love is that the Bible says of all the different things about Noah, that he was obedient, that he loved his family, he did all, all the right things. It says that he was a righteous man. In other words, he did things that were the right things to do in the sight of God. And we have a breastplate here in the armor of God. We're talking about the breastplate of righteousness. Now, the thing about a breastplate, like we said earlier, is it guards your important internal organs, but most importantly, it guards your heart, the core of who you are. It protects your heart. And the thing about your heart is it says in the Bible, in the book of Proverbs, it says above everything else that you do, every other decision that you make as a follower of Jesus, one of the most important things you can do is to guard your heart. It goes on to say, because this is why every decision you make, everything that you do in life all flows from what is in your heart. I remember once we were away at a camp and we had a big water container and we had a dead gecko floating inside the water container. Now, we found it before anyone drank it, but it didn't matter what else we did. If you took water out of that container, it was contaminated by what was inside. And so every decision you make, every choice in your life comes from your heart. If you're not putting good things into your heart, if you're letting bad thoughts into your heart, if you're letting the mean words that other people speak into your heart, then every decision you make will be infected or contaminated by what you've let into your heart. But if you protect 
your heart. If you guard your heart, you ensure that the only things that you're letting into your heart are things that are good, things that are pure, things that are noble, things that are praiseworthy, things that bring glory to God then even if you do mess up, even if you do make mistakes, you can know that you're doing your best and that you know that every decision that you make will be coming from a place of purity and cleanness. And so that's my my question for you today. What sort of person do you want to be? Do you want to be the sort of person that allows the, the dirty and messy things of the world, the mean things other people say into your heart? Like if someone's being mean to you and bullying you, are you going to let that into your heart? Because if you do, then it's, there's a potential that you will copy what you've allowed into your heart. If someone's being mean to you and you let that into your heart, then there's potential that you will then be mean to others. If you let hurt and fear into your heart, then it's possible that you will live hurt and fearful. But if you only allow courage and strength and the word of God and encouragement into your heart, if you guard your heart, then you know that anything that comes from your heart will be pure and noble and praiseworthy. And so that's my challenge for you today. What sort of person do you want to be? What will you let into your heart? Will you leave your heart open for anything to get in? Or will you make a decision today to put on the breastplate of righteousness and only allow things into your heart that you know are in line with what God wants for your life? But right now, we're going to get CCM Miguel back on stage. How much fun was today? Filming with the live studio audience. So much fun. But you know what, Buckle? I loved how we learned that we can guard our hearts by using the breastplate of righteousness. And I love that I once again had victory in the Super Serious Quiz. Can you get all victories over the next six weeks? So that's going to be the question. I'm but hey, that. we had so much fun hanging out with all of you today live and all of you watching from church and school and home. But my name is Buckle. My name's Miguel. I'm Cece. And we'll see you next week on The Link Show. Bye.